Picture this, you've been working as usual, nothing out of the ordinary, but suddenly you hear this sound. The manager calls you and say that you need to join a meeting with no heads up for all it's all about. And your heart starts racing and you don't know what to expect. A second later, someone from HR also joins the meeting and you hear, I would like to thank you for your time here, but your position has been eliminated. In less than 30 seconds, your life is upside down and you know, don't know what to expect. Hi, Brittany. Hi. Thanks for meeting with me and Rosie. Um, we have an important meeting today. Uh, we finished our evaluations of 2023 performance. And this is where you have not met Cloudflare expectations for performance. We've decided to part ways with you. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there. Getting layoff sucks, big time. Especially in tech where things move fast and suddenly you're out. That happened back to me in 2021. I wasn't ready to talk about it because frankly, it felt like a punch in the gut. We all handled things differently, but for me, I spent months second guessing myself, thinking that I wasn't I good enough for this. Well, surprise. Turns out I was wrong about a lot of that. And after a roller coaster of job searching, I'm back on track. And I, in fact, I got this fantastic job with this Canadian company in Vancouver. But getting here, that was another whole story. And I wanted to share with you the struggles, the light bulb moments, and how I beat this nagging imposter syndrome and I landed on my feet again. Plus, we'll dive into why these tech layoffs are happening in the first place and how you cannot just survive, but came out stronger on the other side. Let's talk about what has happened in the past few months. Thousands of people, especially in tech, found themselves out of a job. The worst part, many believed they had stable careers, crazy good salaries. Then reality hits. Suddenly they are facing a job market flooded with skilled people wondering if they are going to ever find that kind of opportunity again. Remember that story on how Facebook paid a couple of employees so just the rivals couldn't hire them? Those days are over. That's why it's been so shocking for soft engineers. They were used to switching jobs at will, grabbing those high offers whenever they wanted. But in 2022, we saw tons of layoff and in 2023 alone we saw 240,000 people having been let go that's mind-blowing there's no one easy answer to all of that but there are things at least for me that made this mess start to make sense much of this was beyond my control and it wasn't about me being a bad engineer. I know incredibly talented people, seriously, 10 times better coders than me, who still got swept up in this. Their skills didn't save them from this bad economy and for the reasons that I'm about to dive into. So let's talk about the possible reasons now. Well, let's start with overhiring. Remember how big tech was expanding before the pandemic? With money so cheap, companies were all about growth and that means scramble for talent. It was a weird time, honestly, and I remember getting interview offers daily with crazy salary bumps. Recruiters were throwing salary numbers, nothing like how it is right now. In that frenzy, some less qualified people slipped through the cracks, landing high paying jobs they couldn't keep up. I know folks who double or triple their salary just to get fired later when they couldn't keep up or deliver. But it wasn't just bad hiring. The need for soft engineers was a symptom of something bigger. The sudden pressure to digitalize everything, basically. Think about it like how lockdowns, groceries went online, entertainment went online. And to make all of that happen, you guessed it. You need talented people. But the scale this time felt different. That brings us to the Spotify layoffs that happened late in 2023. A Spotify preparing to yet again pair back its staff, cutting 17% of employees in the third round of layoffs this year. Like many tech companies, Spotify saw explosive staffing growth during the pandemic. Headcount more than doubled during the past three years, with investors more focused on profitability than growth. This is where interest rates matter. When they go up, it makes investors more cautious and companies have to rethink their spending. Remember at how the start of the pandemic, the interest rates plunged, fueling up everything from cheap mortgages to risky investments. The goal was to keep the economy from collapsing, encouraging people to spend more and companies to borrow. For startups, those low interest rates were a double-edged sword. Of course, money was easy to come by, but the pandemic threw everything into chaos. Consumer habits shifted wildly, and those pre-pandemic growth rates weren't always sustainable. At the same time, VC funds and companies were realizing that getting big returns on startup investments would take longer, if they happened at all. Remember, only a small fraction of startups become huge successes. Fast forward to things opening up, the hangover hits, the inflation spikes, and the Federal Reserve starting jacking up those interest rates. This is Fed Chairman Jerome Powell on what will be needed to ensure a long economic expansion. That's going to require the Fed to tighten interest rate policy and do our part 
in getting inflation back down to our 2% goal. Suddenly, all VC capitals get way more expensive to use, and angel investor starts to think, why I would risk my money if I can get a safe 5% return elsewhere? The result, investments in the tech space dries up. Companies that rely on VC funding to stay afloat, even if they were profitable, are now facing a harsh reality. The path to profitability becomes the only path. There's no more fancy Series B or C investments unless you're ranking up in the cash. That's why this layoff began. Startups desperately need to strut their runway. Basically, the amount of time they can survive without more money. Cutting jobs becomes a desperate bid to survive the pandemic, the inflation, and the potential recession. Okay, now that we looked at why this layoff happened, it's time to talk about how we can get through it. First, you need to get your head on straight. It's hard, but you won't go far if you're stuck blaming yourself. Remember that there are massive forces at work here. Unless you had major performance problems, this was likely not your worth as an engineer. The sooner you accept that, the sooner you can start moving forward. If you need help processing this, uh, don't be afraid to reach out. And uh, talking to a professional might help. Sometimes an outside perspective can help cut through the mental fog. Also remind yourself of what you have accomplished. Think back about your past win and how far you've come. It's easy to forget when you're feeling down. Maybe even keep a journal to track your little wins because they add up. The best careers are about growth, learning from mistakes and getting tougher. Here are a few things to keep in mind. Where we want to be in a few years? Without a goal, it's hard to know which steps to take. You messed up a project? Use as a few and learn from mistakes to do better next time. Challenges actually make you stronger. Be afraid to try new things. You might discover a new hidden talent or skill that will make your career steer to a nice direction. Okay, enough for career advice now. And let's talk about something seriously important. Understanding the people you work for. Think back about how you land your job or your last one. Was it through a recruiter? Do you remember those interview the whole best place to work pitch right that's important because most companies try to sell you a dream it's rare for a recruiter to tell you what is actually like a day-to-day -day working at a specific company you've got to learn to read between the lines different type of companies come with different reality for startups they are like speedboat constantly testing new ideas to find something that will make them money your priorities might shift quickly and there's a pressure to move fast if that doesn't sound like you that might not be a good fit for larger companies they're like cruise ships they are slower and more stable you might have more time to get better at your craft but you also have to learn the new office politics for deeper into this i really recommend the soft engineer guides book uh, it's packed with valuable insights about what you're getting into. Here's my number one piece of advice. Understand how your employer makes money. If it's just shady or you don't get it, it's basically a red flag. A business that can't explain its revenue won't be staying around for longer. Here's a quick checklist for you to vet a company. Who are their competitors? For certain if they are growing or shrinking over time. How big is the market? Is it expanding or saturated? Look for public financials or if they share those numbers internally. What's their employee? employee turnover looks like. Reach out to LinkedIn or Glassdoor to see for how longer an employee typically stay. Talk to people who work there. Reach out on LinkedIn for people that had similar positions that you're uh, basically trying to get into and reach out and ask them questions. Once you have done your research, you will be better equipped to do the decision that is right for you. Okay, now let's shift gears and talk about the professional skills that you need to develop. Let me ask you, what are you technically? And what do you really know? And how do you bring value to the table? Understanding your professional identity is crucial to help you move forward. Or if you need to shift gears to make yourself truly valuable in today's job market. Let's talk about tech stack. Are you on top of the current tech trends? Or uh, how do they compare to the things that you use at work? Are you current or are your skills getting outdated? A good engineer knows the answer to those questions. They can weigh the pros and cons of different tools and they stay ahead of the curve. If you are bored because you are doing the same old things, remember that business exists to make money, but that doesn't mean that you can't influence change. If you can make a case for why a new tool or approach would be better, you will gain a valuable experience in the process. Needless to say that your communication and negotiating skills will level up. Embrace the opportunity and experiment with different things, even if you fail. Take this opportunity to learn why 
why it didn't work, uh, do a post order and, and apply that skill into your next challenge. If your current company doesn't allow you to fail, you need to find one that does. And by the way, this kind of initiative is called in tech interviews. When you ask about the challenges you faced, you will have real stories instead of just a canned response. We developers need more than a resume. We need a portfolio that showcase our skills. The good news is that you already have impressive technical skills that you can use to build cool stuff and even impress your employer. Um, you can even start a lucrative side business. Before I got into tech, I worked in a company in Brazil and I had no experience. So I had to build my portfolio to show employers that I knew my stuff. It worked. I got my job uh, quickly and the pay was great. My advice, don't build generic projects that everyone does. Find something that you're truly passionate about it and just build it. I love movies, so I built a community app for people to talk about a specific genre of movies. It was great talking about it in interviews because I could showcase that I could build real projects, not just code exercises. Thanks for sticking with me. I know uploads have been a sporadic lately, so um, I'm working on my bachelor's degree, juggling a lot, and building my career back up. Hey, that just means that I have real, real world experience to share with you. If you found this useful, uh, please, I'm curious to see your story. Uh, so drop a comment down below. What topics would you like me to cover next? Uh, career advice, software engineering, and app building? Let me know. Um, I'm looking for video ideas right now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.